Okay, so so here we have a a, a, the, a broken balance sheet. So we've hard coded out the balance sheet for Walmart. 2013 is not balancing, and so I want to kind of go through the techniques for trying to balance this within an efficient time frame, right? And so just generally, what I would recommend based on the concept that each asset liability and shareholders equity um, line item is impacted by how cash is sourced or spent. We want to look to the cash flow to determine what might be out of balance. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and create a temporary differences column on the balance sheet. And that differences column is going to pretty much replicate our cash flows. And so we want to match cash flows to the balance sheet line item. And we'll see if we find some sort of mismatch, that's going to easily help us identify what's wrong with the balance sheet. So the first thing I'd recommend is first, I just want to be concerned about the first column that doesn't balance. Because once you get this first column balancing, then you can just copy everything to the right and the rest should balance. So I'm going to wipe out everything after 2014. I'm only concerned about 2013. And I'm going to create a differences column and call it differences. And I'm going to spell it right. And I'm going to subtract 2013 minus 2012 or vice versa. I don't care which way it's going right now. I'm going to copy this all the way down. And these should represent cash flows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go line by line with each balance sheet and ask myself two questions. Number one, which cash flow statement line item should this be representing? Does the number match? If the number matches, that means I'm pulling it in from the right cash flow. And two, is it going in the right direction? Is it flowing in the right direction? And so as I'm going down and checking off and, and identifying these line items, I'm going to be checking off each cash flow to make sure it's been used because the reason why a balance sheet is out of balance is if there are cash flows that are not represented properly in the balance sheet. A balance sheet stays in balance when each and every cash flow is properly represented into the balance sheet. And I'll recap that when we're done with this. So first example, I see my cash is going up by 958.9. So we should see a positive 958.9 in cash and cash equivalents in the cash flow statement because that's where this comes from. So in the cash flow statement, 2013, do I see positive 958.9? I do. So I'm going to highlight this to represent that I've used this line item in the balance sheet already. I don't want to double count. And I move on to the next one. Receivables is going down by 146.9. Five. So which cash flow statement line item drives receivables? Changes in accounts receivable. So I should see a changes in accounts receivable of 146.5. I should see a plus 146.5 in the cash flow statement because if it's an increase in cash, it's a reduction in receivables. I've collected, if my receivables goes down, that means I've collected cash. So I should see, I should see plus 146.5 in changes in accounts receivable, and I do. So I'm going to highlight that. That's been used. Next, inventory. Inventory down by 148.4. Again, I should see plus 148.4. If inventory has gone down, I've sold inventory, I've received cash for it. I should see plus 148.4, and I don't. I see minus 148.4. That indicates to me something's wrong in the balance sheet. If it's a minus cash flow, that means, think about I've purchased inventory, think about it that way. If it's minus 148.4, my inventory should be going up. But no, my inventory is going down. So something's wrong in here, and I see the formula is wrong. This should be equal to the year before minus the cash flow statement G14, which would indicate that my inventories are going up. Now it works. I'm going to go back, and I'm going to highlight that my change in inventory has been utilized and is now properly utilized. Prepaid expenses going up by 773.9. I should see minus 773.9 on the cash flow statement, and I do. I'll continue. Continue. I'm not, I don't care about zeros for now. I don't care about totals for now. PP&E, it's going up by 14213. PP&E is impacted mainly by capex and depreciation. So the sum of my capex and depreciation. So here's depreciation. I'm going to hold down control to sum it with capex. The sum of my capex and depreciation is actually 5621. Number is completely off. What do I have here? I have 14213. I don't know what's going on in there. It's it's affecting a lot of things. It's G22, G24, G25. What is that doing? It's, it's affecting G22. Okay, that's fine. G24, 
Okay, divesting property, fine, but it's zero. G25, okay, investments, fine, that's zero, but something's missing. 22, it's, it's impacting CapEx. Where's my depreciation? So for some reason, it didn't link to depreciation. So we identified something was wrong there. The PP&E did not include the impacts on depreciation, and it should always. Minus G25, there it goes. There's my 5621.3, 5621.3 1.3 was the sum of my capex and depreciation 5621. This is working now. Going to go down to goodwill. Other other could contain a lot of different line items in here. It's impacted by G26. G26 is other investing activities. Sounds about right to me. My other investing activities is negative 438. So the balance sheet should be increasing by 438, and it is. So that's okay for now. I'm going to continue down. I don't care about totals. I don't care about zeros. Accounts payable. In the liability side, if the accounts payable is going up, that should represent cash coming in. My accounts payable is going up by 701.2. I should see accounts, uh, uh, accounts payable, changes in accounts payable, positive 701.2. And I do. Looks okay. You guys had this so far? Good. Accrued liabilities up by 979. I should see positive 979. I don't. I see positive 1425.7. Something is wrong in the accrued liabilities. What's wrong? It looks like it looks like here is 979. It looks like it's pulling in from the wrong column. Antoine agrees. So year before equals the year before plus look at this column H. That's the wrong column. I want G17. There's my 1425.7. So it looks like it was pulling in from the wrong column. So we've identified a third problem, right? The first was the accounts, the inventory, the poopy expenses. Sorry, the second was lack of including depreciation. Third was accrued liabilities is wrong. Next, accrued income taxes down 399.6. I see negative 399.6. That's correct. Let's move on. I don't care about zeros. I don't care about totals. Everything else is zero. Deferred income taxes. Deferred income taxes is up 715.9. I should see plus 715.9 deferred income taxes, and I do. Looks good. It matches. I don't care about zeros and totals. No zeros and totals. I don't care about for now. Retain earnings up by 11,377. Retain earnings is typically impacted by net income after distributions. So my net income after distributions, net income after distributions, I'm going to hold down control and hit distributions. Sorry, dividends, just dividends, other distributions. 13,340.5. What do I have here? 11,377. What's going on? Let's look at what's going on in here. Something's wrong in here. G77, sorry. G7 and G35. So G7 is net income. G35 is treasury stock. Now, we know Walmart's a special case. Treasury stock is also included in retained earnings in this case. Usually treasury stock is separated. But if we include treasury stock, then um, we've realized that their retained earnings calculation had forgotten to include the dividends. It did not include dividends. It included G35 and G7. That's net income and treasury stock. It did not include dividends paid. So it had left out dividends paid. So we want to tack on to this the reduction of the distributions of the dividends. So I'm going to add to this formula plus the dividends paid. And now we have 6032.3. So now this is appropriately calculated. Accumulated other comprehensive losses, including G40, 38, 8, and 26. Let's see if those are proper items. G40, yes, effective exchange rate on cash. G38, yes, other. It said G8, which is discontinued operations. Sounds good to me. And then I believe it said 26. Other investing activities. G26 had already been used. It's double counting G26. This is why we have to check things off as we go along to avoid any double counting. G26 
has already been used. Let's take this out. We've double counted that. Looks better. Okay. I don't care about totals, totals, totals. We're still not balancing, right? Which means, let's go to the cash flow statement. Let's make sure we're including everything. Is something missing? Yes, we did not include this. Other operating activities. So we left something out. We went down, we highlighted, we checked off everything being used. Other operating activities was not used. Let's include this. We discussed other operating activities yesterday. We've concluded in this example, this should be part of other, what we're going to guesstimate as part of other long-term assets. So let's include this into other long-term assets. In the balance sheet, we have other long-term assets. Let's tack on to this formula minus cash flow statement, other operating activities. Okay, still not balancing. Now, if we've gone through this process and everything's checked out and it still doesn't balance, it must be a problem of type four. So remember what we discussed yesterday. There are four possible ways only four, a balance sheet can be out of balance. And we've identified them as we were going through this process. Number one, there's a line item in the cash flow statement that has not been linked. It's been left out. That's why we have to check things off as we go along. And we just identified that situation. We went through, we looked at each balance sheet line item, we've tied it to each individual cash flow, and we realized we had left out one of, uh, other operating activity line item. That's a common problem. Two, there's a line in the cash statement that's been linked in two places in the balance sheet. We've identified that problem as well. We went in and we had realized early, early on this line item, other investing activities was used. And then at the bottom of the balance sheet, if you remember what we had just noticed, we were looking at other comprehensive income and loss. We had realized that it was referencing this line item again. There's a line item in the cash flow statement that's been linked twice. Another common problem. So this is why when you go through and do this process line by line, you have to check off the cash flow line items. Three, the line item is linked from the cash flow statement to the balance sheet, but it's going the wrong way or it's linked from the wrong column. So we've identified those problems in several places. We've identified that in the beginning. This is why it's important to match the numbers. We first asked ourselves each question we notice is with prepaid expenses or I, I forgot if it was whether inventory or expenses, but we noticed the number didn't match, or we noticed, we stepped back and thought, well, the, the balance sheet is increasing. Should it be increasing or should it be decreasing? This is a type three problem. And so if we go through this whole process and it still doesn't balance, and we know we've identified problems of type one, two, and three, and there are no more type one, two, and three problems left, it must be a problem of type four, which means there is a totaling error somewhere. Something is totaling wrong. Everything is linking properly between the balance sheet, the cash statement, and the balance sheet. Something is adding up wrong. And I'll start with the cash flow statement. It's usually in the cash flow statement. Let's look at working capital. Working capital looks like it's adding properly. Let's look at operating activities. There you go. There you go. Operating activities is adding up the top line items. It's not including the working capital line items. It's adding, it's totaling wrong. The year before is totaling correctly. So I'm just going to copy the year before to the right. It's totaling now properly. Let's see if that fixes our balance sheet. And it does. Guaranteed foolproof method. It should not take you more than 30 minutes. This is where I went through. This is where I got the 30 minutes. It should not take you more than 30 minutes to balance any type of balance sheet. And I don't care. These balance sheets are built in order. I've seen balance sheets that are complete mess. And I would recommend printing it out. I recommend printing it out, printing out the cash statement, printing out the balance sheet, go with the calculator and a pencil, line by line, and do this. And guaranteed you'll always find the problem. 